One of the most inexpensive ways to fish a lot of different places in a lot of areas is to do a road trip. And what better state to do a fly fishing road trip than the state of Montana? I'm out here renting a car, driving around, fishing spot to spot, rivers that I've fished, rivers that I've never fished before, and I'm just gonna figure it out. For those who can't afford a guided elk hunt on a private ranch or a fly fishing trip to the Amazon, this show is for you. This is Budget Outdoors TV, your source of high quality fishing and hunting locations that are affordable. You won't see us staying in fancy lodges, just over the counter, public land, do it yourself trips. Our goal is to motivate you to spend less and get out more. Today we're gonna head out of Missoula, about an hour out of Missoula, and we're just gonna go out and figure it out. We're gonna catch fish or not catch fish, and uh, yeah, so pulled up, filled up with some gas, and uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention we're in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, it's July, uh, Montana has got a lot of spiking cases of uh, the coronavirus, and uh, so yeah, we've got some mixed emotions as far as uh, we're excited but we're also pretty nervous about uh, what's going to happen with the virus so we're kind of that's always in the back of our minds but our goal is to just get out get away get that off our mind mask up be careful and uh, catch some fish you know the cost of this trip Take a gas and a fishing license. If you're out of state, you're paying an out of state license. I mean, we're within an hour of Missoula, so you can fly into Missoula, rent a car, come out here, park your car, or your truck, come down here and, and fish. I mean, this is about it. If you live in Montana, I mean, this is, this is in your backyard. You can fish here for basically free. It's the cost of your license if you have all the gear. Just come park your truck out here and do some legwork, come out here and just try it out. <laughs> oh, that was quick. <laughs> that was awesome. That was cool. So first day out here in Montana, man, it is exciting to be out here. Middle of the pandemic. Everybody's really fearful of the coronavirus and we're out here fly fishing on this river. There's nobody around. And that's what I love about Montana the most is there's nobody here. When we just parked there off the side of the road, we just picked this random stream and there's nobody here. Water is perfect, temperature is perfect. Oh, that would have been a cool one. And I'm gonna hook a big fish right in here, I'm sure. I just can't wait. Did you see that? Dude, that was a big, it looked like a big bull trout. That was a big fish. Eating, eating on top. I mean, that is something that Montana has that a lot of, a lot of other places don't. Like Oregon, I feel like we don't have this like crystal clear water kind of coming down and Gosh, you can just see the bottom. You can see everything. You can see the bottom everywhere. And a lot of times when these fish come up, you can see them come up all the way from the bottom. It's really cool to see. Yeah. 
you know, pulled up here and uh, right off the bat hooked one and lost one on the nymph rig and kind of switched it up and hooked another one, got off and uh, missed a couple other like little eats along the way. But uh, man, it's just, it's been awesome being out here. You know, and the, the reason for coming out to this location is that anybody can come out to this spot and stand right here and fish. I mean, this is like being like in heaven out here. We don't have this kind of scenery in Oregon. And this is exactly why people come to Montana to fish. And uh, when you talk about a budget, this is the most uh, inexpensive trip you can do. It's just a tank of gas to drive out here, park on the side of the road, walk down a half mile, two miles. I mean, that's amazing. I've always wanted to fish this river. Like it's always been on my bucket list to do. And I, I lived in Montana for two years. I fished all these different Freestone, Freestone rivers and Bitterroot, and I fished a lot of the Clark Fork and never made it up here. And it's so fun to come here. The day is perfect. There's nobody here and like third cast, boom, caught one. Hey bear. Hey bear. Yeah, that's exactly what we were talking about. The fish just came up slow, came down, and then I was able to set the hook. It wasn't those like smashing grabs like I had all those other ones. The smashing grabs make it really difficult to hook them. Oh. <laughs> Man, I missed that one. Hooked one off the nymph rig right away. Came down here, hooked a couple of other ones and haven't landed one yet, but man, it's just, it's just awesome. You could just come out here and just do this by yourself. Cost a license and a tank of gas. So it's just about as cheap as you can get. And it's about time to head home. And uh, yeah, this place that we parked, we had just a little bit of trouble getting out. You can, you can see the tires spinning and uh, a little bit rough go kind of, you know, I guess what you can't see from this angle is that it is sloped. Uh, kind of two different ways, so it was a little bit difficult getting out. But yeah, it's time to head back home to Missoula, get showered, get changed, and uh, get a good night's sleep, and uh, head, in, head it out in the morning. So tomorrow morning, the plan is to get out and travel out to Anaconda, to Butte, and eventually to Phillipsburg, and um, yeah, just kind of figure out. We, we're not sure where we're gonna stay for the night, but we're just gonna, we're gonna figure it out. All right, so day two, rural Montana, side of the road, about to go fishing. 
middle of the pandemic, cases in Montana are just spiking, just going up and up and up. Everybody's getting real, real fearful. So that's why I'm wearing a mask pretty much everywhere except for fishing. Everybody's really worried about, you know, catching the virus. And, and so we're doing our part by wearing our masks and social distancing, you know, the best we can, you know. And um, I'm out here, I'm gonna do my best and uh, we're gonna hopefully make something happen down here. We're just gonna get it done. Almost 10 o'clock in the morning. I've caught a couple of fish here when I used to live in, in Missoula. I used to come out here all the time by myself and I'm just gonna throw some streamers and figure it out, so. But this is um, the exact spot I got that one. It just ripped a streamer and as soon as it's like strip, boom. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah! Oh, that's cool. Dude, that was cool. <laughs> that was neat. dries on the top with nothing, we fish hoppers on the top and nothing happened. And I'll throw a streamer along the bank and then nothing, nothing. All of a sudden that fish just like hammered that streamer. So that was awesome, man, to, to get to come out here and do that. Pretty gratifying to, you know, about 10 minutes into the game catch that fish. So that was, that was awesome. It's not where I put in. <laughs> Yeah, so we've got that awesome streamer bite right off the bat here. and It's about 11 o'clock, we're gonna pack up and go somewhere else. Go up to uh, Upper Rock Creek and check that out, so. Um, man, they decided to start off with a bang, so. Day two's looking good. Rock Creek has always been a favorite of mine. This has always been a place that I've just really enjoyed fishing. I've, the Rock Creek extends for many, many miles and it's got a road. It goes right along Rock Creek the entire way, basically. And so Rock Creek's got so many different miles of, of water. It's got so many different fish packed in there. And my favorite thing is just the scenery, the wildlife. Rock Creek has always been like a really beautiful place to go fish. So yeah, I'm really lucky to be here and uh, hopefully I can catch some fish. Oh, there we go. I think that's your brownie. Oh, that was cool. That was so awesome. That's your brown trout. I mean, this thing's pretty cool. Pretty cool looking. Right on the edge of the choppy in the slow water. And then I wouldn't like walk any further up right now. To the, so to the right, more of that. That, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, dude, that water looks good. <laughs> Drip! Is that a fish? It was a fish. That was like, it was like half the size of the jump. Hell yeah. That was uh... That's what I'm talking about. 
set. They just really like wanna. Okay. The hooking montage is definitely gonna be tight. Hey, that's... Every fish in the river is going to start eating the pheasant tail. Like that? Oh. Keep pressure, that's a fish. Dude, it's I a know. good fish. It's, it's like literally right where you said it. Oh, dude. I was feeling it. I was like, that's going to work. I mean, exactly. Is that a big fish? Sure. It's like a brownie. Dude, that was awesome. Dude, that was so cool. <laughs> oh. Yeah, little rainbow. That's insane. One of the differences of coming out and doing this trip by myself, with no guides, with really no help, just trying to figure it out on my own, is uh, the satisfaction when you do catch a fish, right? You're coming to an area you've never been to, you're fishing and all of a sudden your indicator goes down, your chubby gets eaten, and you're just, you're just on cloud nine because you figured it out yourself. You put the whole plan together and executed it all by yourself. Nobody was telling you what to do. You don't have a guide showing you where to fish. And uh, there's oh, something there satisfying a... about that. Just pulling those fish in, just kind of one after another. Um, oh, because man, you don't cool. have that help, you're that doing it all so yourself. So that satisfaction was really cool here on this trip and uh, probably what I'm gonna remember most about Rock Creek. Day three, we're in Twin Bridges, Montana, driving out to Sheridan. We stopped by the fly shop real quick at uh, Four Rivers. Uh, talked to my buddy Seth, hooked us up with some bugs, and uh, went out there, yeah. And um, so this is a do-it-yourself. I've never been to this stretch of river before. Uh, I have no experience. I don't know what to expect. Um, do-it-yourself trip, yeah. So just tank of gas, load up the rig, and come out and see see what you can do.
I ended up catching a couple of brown trout. They're not big, obviously those are very, very small fish, but the satisfaction of putting it all together and knowing that there's a fish in the spot where I thought there was a fish, pulling him in, releasing him, landing him, uh, that's all cool. So the size of the fish isn't super important. What is important is that I was able to catch some fish uh, on this river on day one of fishing this river, never really been here before. So that's, uh, that's super rewarding and the fact that I didn't have a guide I'm pretty proud that I was able to figure it out on my own and uh, put it together and, yeah, and actually catch kind of catching two fish on your way. own. Hey, that's that's okay with me. There he goes. <laughs> Trout relocation initiative. You want me to get it? I know, I think I can oh, get yeah, it. You can get it, yeah. It's like, yeah, I just do not want to fall in. I could probably throw it to you. You have a place to put it? Not really. Uh, Here, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna throw it over there. Are you sure with the line you're gonna make it? No, I'm not sure. You probably won't make it. But we were gonna lose it, so. Oh! <laughs> Should have should have filmed that. <laughs> 